Which one do you think should matter more? Your image or your music? And we're not talking about image like a popping social media follower, influencer, or whatever you want to call it. We just mean the way you're truly perceived as an artist and how that impacts how people receive your message. There's a crazy conversation in this clip that talks about an artist's career being potentially killed, ended maybe, just because of his image, even though people loved him beforehand. But we want to get y'all's opinions and see if y'all can guess who we're talking about. Check this out. It's culturally, well, it we got so many bad stigmas that just fuck us. You feel me? Like, we can say whatever we want to say about people's albums and if we like them or not because music being good or bad is subjective. By the way, this is Vince Staples on the Joe Budden podcast. Mm. But we had the biggest rapper in the world say he loved his wife and the niggas called him corny and took his career away from him. So when we talk about generational wealth. Who the biggest rapper in the world? Oh, Chance when they was paying for it. Chance they wasn't was paying for it at the time? Yes, but. <laughs> you know what happens when they pay for it, don't they? The same niggas that pay for him pay for Frank Ocean and pay for Drake at a certain point in time. So he wasn't Drake, but I'm talking about up and coming. He was, yeah. So at they a point in time. My chance come on, we're talking about generational wealth. Well, niggas don't even want families no more. Dog, Ooh. niggas do not want to hear how much you love your wife sprinkled over 19 tracks. I know, but it's your job, you like it's R&B though, right? Love it. What's the difference? That's a great point. What's the difference? What's the difference between R&B and talking about I love your wife? I think I'm in the message. It's like R&B music is, is essentially a musical expression of love. What's the mm. difference between that and a, a rap expression of love? My counterpoint is you don't want to hear anybody talk about they love their wife over 19 tracks, but you'll listen to somebody talk about they want to kill somebody over 19 tracks. That's... That's fair. What's wrong with that redundancy? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hear all R&B talking about I love my wife. and I don't my, think the content oh, was hey. the issue with that album, by the way. No, I'm not saying it, but I, you, you know, can't love your wife that long. You can love your wife, but it's got to be fire. Think about what you just give said. Me That's one crazy. Per, give Pick me one, one person that did it. They loved their In wife? hip-hop? Over 19 tracks. Well, I have a long Hip-hop that album been before. fucked up since the beginning, so like you can't really put <laughs> hip-hop in that sure. equation. All right. All right. <laughs> Give us I, one person that did. I would say I actually know one person, one artist, one amazing, super talented human being that has managed to traverse the rocky terrains of being a rapper in love, and that is Young Thug. Hmm. Young Thug did it. He had hmm. a period where he was rapping about how much he loved. I can't remember her name. Was it um, like Carly maybe or something with a J? It was before Mariah the Scientist, which you could argue doesn't matter now because, you know. Life has took him to other places, but at that time, yeah, he was rapping all about how much he loved her, bro, and, and it worked out for him. I don't know if it's because we didn't believe him or it was <laughs> interesting to see, but he did it. Well, Parks mentioned in his video, he said he doesn't think it was all subject matter. Mm. Quality of music played, which I know there were a couple tracks that I didn't necessarily like. Maybe it was like the very first track I didn't necessarily like, and it's hard to come back from. I don't like how a project starts. And I'm somebody who I appreciate Chance the Rapper stuff. A lot of people are saying Chance was never going to be big or he never was big. A lot of these people just don't get, maybe he wasn't in their, their demographic. Mm -hmm. But Chance was, was huge in terms of who he was, positioning, and what they specified in terms of upcoming. He was the biggest rapper in the world in terms of who was up next or who was trending at that time? Yeah, and at the time he was artist. at the time he was definitely the biggest indie artist, which was interesting. You know, if we if we, you know, agree with him and yeah, yeah, believe yeah. him on that, the biggest indie artist. And I don't know, man. One thing that I think doesn't get thought about enough in this debate because I've heard this debate a couple times before from a couple different platforms. I've had a debate with friends in real life, and that album came out with like. What was that, like 2017, maybe something like that? No, 18? Probably like 19. 19? Probably. Um, this is what I think happened, right? I think Chance was starting to get bigger. He was starting to appeal to a bigger demographic of people. Actually, I, before I even get to that point, we have to also think about what the image was of Chance before he got to that point. I was about point. to say, because image is what this conversation is about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So I was like, before this album, you were a delinquent high school kid who did drugs and smoked cigarettes. And we learned that your mom likes cocoa butter more than she likes lotion. That's all we know about you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you're from Chicago. We know that about you, right? And then you transition away from this, this seemingly imperfect character that you built for us to enjoy 
to now almost being like, you know, arguably this like preachy, almost like father figure esque. We don't <laughs> do the same drugs no more. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's like, like who don't? You know what I'm like, bro, yeah, your fans are like, wait, we still <laughs> like, but that was two years ago. I, mean, I ain't really moved on to nothing else. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless you know about some shit, I don't know about. And so, I think it's that point, right? You propped up this character, and then now you've you've removed yourself from the character, yeah, in certain ways, right? Yeah. There's another angle of it. What I was going to earlier is that sometimes you got to think about the life of the person on the other side of the music, mm. right? 2019 was pre-pandemic, so I can't use pandemic as an excuse for nothing. But what I like to think happened is that Chance was getting bigger. Chance was starting to appeal to not only a broader demographic of people, but he was also starting to transition into spaces where younger audiences were paying attention to him. I will argue, and I'm sure there's some young people out there who, who disagree with me, but I will argue 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, maybe up into 25, 26, you don't really know too much about love. You know what I'm saying? Most people at that age have never been in like, like a serious, committed relationship. I'm not, I'm not talking about- is that's his fan base at the time, that yeah, age, yeah. Yeah, it's like, and I'm not talking about like, oh, like, I really love this person, they really love me. I'm talking about like, no, like, you dead ass are responsible for each other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a com- I mean, you married, man, you get it, bro. That's a completely Real different- Real love. That's a completely right. different level of love, bro. Like, my yeah. life is in your hands and your life is in my hands, you know what I'm saying? That's a- Commitment. commitment. They don't know about <laughs> commitment. That's what it is. <laughs> that thing that means I'm gonna be there even though I don't want to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> this, that's a good point because at that age, people are going through the, usually the more toxic parts of love exactly. and discovering what love is and everything they can relate to. Everything's why, extreme. You know, exactly. Everything's <laughs> extreme. So now you're overreacting even though, and, and you know, there, there's fighting and fussing, you're hurting, and you're relating to music. That expresses in that way. Mm-hmm. All right. It was all Juice World and X. Right. You know what Depressed I'm saying? <laughs> or F, F that man, F that B. Mm-hmm. That's the type of music that a lot of people, you know, are relating to. Because all we right? all been heartbroken. We all didn't experience love. Yeah. I remember having those moments myself. Right. <laughs> but yeah, so the, the love, the love hits different. The love does hit different um, at a certain age. So now you outpaced the growth of your fan base. And mm-hmm. that's the other phenomenon what some people try to say with Drake right now is like he's not growing with his fan base, mm-hmm. right? His growth is stunted. Chance just shot through the moon, you know what I mean? Had one of those summers where he was like five five and next thing you know, came back to school and he was six ten. Exactly. You know, it's like, hey bro, like that evolution. Yeah. Or it's like watching it's too like quick. it's like watching the school bully come back is like a like a Jehovah Witness or something. It's like mm. I don't believe you exactly. Like I <laughs> I want to I want to rock with your message, but I just I just cannot receive it from you. Can't receive it. And another artist who caught flag that year was J Cole. Remember that's the same year when what motherfuckers was on J Cole asked about that. I want to fold clothes for you song or something that had came out. I forgot about that. I ain't even really. I'm saying man, like take that seriously. I couldn't even listen to it at the time. Yeah, yeah, 2019 was a bad year for niggas in love. I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? They were ostracized. Drake wasn't dropping nothing to reinforce it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think he dropped nothing that year. I might be wrong. See what happened (laughs) when there was an attack on love. The whole world bottomed out. We yeah, no, bullshit, yeah. <laughs> no bullshit. No <laughs> bullshit. Just like, but that's what we ma- look, hold on, We had to force people <laughs> in to be together. God <laughs> put you in the house and stay stay quarantined. Now y'all gonna be in love. Y'all wanna come home? Well, we gonna force you to be home. Yeah, no bullshit. That's what made me think. I was like, damn man. Like imagine I just like sneezed. Like my brain out right now and die. Like nobody be here, you know what I'm saying? Like make sure I'm okay. Like that's that's not all right, man. I gotta start looking for love. Hey, bro, you started to think of see, that's that <laughs> that's that old portion of a dang, bro. Who gonna get my medicine? <laughs> <laughs> if I fall down the steps, who gonna pick me up? It's just me. You know what I'm saying? And I got I got high steps. You know what I'm saying? And and but that's what makes me think about the um the age and the life experiences of the audience that he was trying to tap into at the time because like I said. J. Cole was catching that same flack. A- and if you really, if you were paying attention at that time at where the critique was coming from, yeah. it was mainly from outlets and platforms that lean towards younger audiences. Facts. Like you didn't hear like the 
the the adult contemporary uh, radio station host saying that. You know what I'm saying? You were here like the like the young blogger, you know what I'm saying, that was posting about, like I said, at the time, like the Kodak Blacks and the Lil Yachty saying things like that because they were voices of the youth. The youth had not yet had life experiences to where they could relate to that same type mm-hmm. of message. To your point, it was a 19-year-old that just got his 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 heart broken by the you know the little John that that told him that she loved him and he heartbroken he's sad he just got done listening to Juice World all girls are the same and then the the Spotify radio next song is Chance the Rapper talking about I love my wife and I want to be with her it's like nigga ain't trying to hear all that <laughs> the fuck <laughs> Stacy quit bragging Stacy broke my heart <laughs> exactly <Quit>. Stacy <laughs> is a thought I want to hear fuck that thought music. Yeah, and I don't believe in love right now. Exactly, like that shit is not a real concept for me right now. And it's like you know that's something I don't think it's talked about enough. Is sometimes you create like every artist is is allowed the right to put a message in their music, mm-hmm. but that does not mean that we as the audience have to accept it. It does not mean that I have to. Um, it does not mean that I have to relate. And oh, I have to speed up my life experiences to catch up to it. Like, no, yeah. I am going to naturally seek out the music, the vibration, the frequencies, the the feels that more so encompass like what I'm going through and what I feel like I'm relating to. And if that ain't you, that ain't that ain't it. The average music fan to the average artist, they're just gonna ignore it. Now, someone at Chance's level, you know what I'm saying, who had as much notoriety at the time, they're going to just talk shit about it. It's just the, it's just the reality yeah. of being at that level. You know what I'm saying? Yo, artists, there's a lot of distributors out there, but if you want a distributor that will take you seriously, not just look at you as a number, then Two Loss is the platform from you. I'm talking about helping you beyond just putting your music on all the DSPs. That's what y'all are supposed to do. Two Loss actually helps you with your money. I'm talking about whoever is a part of the song, dealing out the splits easily, or more importantly, helping giving you an advance so you can actually create what you need to, whether that's studio time, whether that's your music video, but helping you get money to help fund your career. And most importantly, a lot of these distributors don't really help with the playlisting and things like that unless you are a signed artist, you have some kind of serious deal, but Two Loss has that ability as well. And some of our clients, when they switched over to Two Loss, They've given us shining reviews. Mm-hmm. So check out Two Loss at twoloss.com and make sure you put in the code no label. Again, that is no label, N O L A B E L, and let them know that y'all came from us. It's completely free. Make sure y'all let them know where y'all came from. No label. Let's get back to the episode. You connect with me here as my friend, as somebody who reps what I rep. You walk the walk that I'm walking. But then all of a sudden, your image, you shoot way up there. And now I feel like you're that friend that changed and you think you're better than us. Exactly. That's and I, exactly I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Because, like, you know, again, I remember being in that space. <laughs> and all I wanted to do after a breakup was, you know, F around. I had a, I had a whole chant, which I'm not going to repeat. I'll talk to that, talk to you about that after the five, <laughs> you know what I mean? But... You know, I wanted to be mindless for a minute. You know what I mean? Not feel for a bit. You know what I mean? I feel that, man. You know, that's all it was. It all, it, you know, we all go through it. Well, you know, depending on how old you are. You, if you ain't if you ain't got there yet, you will get there. Yeah, exactly. Jacory <laughs> <laughs> talking old as hell. This podcast. You know if you ain't got there yet, <laughs> if you think you lonely now. Uh oh. Waiting till to, tonight. Waiting till you're 23. <laughs> 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 but it, it all goes back to what a, a, a very big ethos of this podcast, which is in order for you to be a great creator, you have to think about the thoughts, feeling, emotion, and life experiences of the people you are creating for. Thanks. And sometimes there's going to be a mismatch. And if you're small, like I said, you'll get ignored. And if you're big, they are going to talk about it mm. and voice their grievances. <laughs> and you have to deal with it because I look at it like you know there Vince is I don't know if Vince is being facetious or not if he really feels like that's what killed Chance's career I personally I don't think it it died I think that it was like Pokemon 
GTA style KO. Like you're not out the game yet, but you fucked up and you're gonna have to restart from a certain from a certain point. You know what I'm saying? You ain't dead, but you starting over for sure. <laughs> and I look at it like, what else could he have done? Like his only solution would have been we could argue, come out and make a a fuck that bitch song, but then he would have real life consequences to do it. He gotta go mm. home to his wife. I'm mm. sure his wife listens to his music, you know what I'm saying? And who wants to deal with that? And y'all should appreciate that congruence versus the lack of authenticity that these other people are out here with. Living a great life, great relationships, but knowing that y'all are in a toxic place and trying to, instead of trying to show y'all what better and giving y'all hope, they just feed in that space pandering. that you're in. Yeah, they're pandering for the pay. Sierra. Mm. That's the most recent example. Hey, we put names out. That was the most recent uh, example, bro. It was on her ass about that shit. Yeah, we ain't the only ones that talked about said, that. You said Sierra with a little vitriol in your voice. Sierra, hey, man, I love love, man. But you gonna deny your love? That's crazy, man. That's crazy, and it's crazy, man. And I don't know, man. I just it's, it's yeah, great example. Like some artists would just pander to the emotion of their fans, and you know sometimes you can feel it. The music doesn't feel as authentic. Yep. I've heard rappers be like. Fuck these hoes. I'm like, man, you in love, man. You, you yeah. I don't see your gram. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I actually got a, a couple of real life examples of that. I've not personally been through recently, but dealt with some artists going through it. Well, like, I have a client now. We have a client now who her first song that took off was a uh, basically like a, a fuck these niggas. You know what I'm saying? Niggas, she not in that space anymore. She's not in that space anymore. She mm -hmm. in love. She in a great, seemingly happy relationship from what I can see. And you know her her. You know, newfound lover is also a music artist, and they made a song together. Mm -hmm. And I remember telling her like, "Yo, I think y'all should really lean into like the happy couple content for this song." And she was like, "Yeah, but my audience is a lot of women who kind of like a, you know, like love gives them a bitter taste in their mouth. Do you think that that's going to negatively impact me?" And I was like, "I'm gonna be real with you. That's a very valid fear that you have. I'm not even gonna lie to you and tell you everything gonna be okay because." Nah, you're right. That's something to think about. Yeah, I was like, now you could flip it, and you could now be the vessel that shows them, like, hey, like we can heal and move past this, mm -hmm. and this is what that looks like. And the ones in your audience that either want that or get that will receive it well. And that's what she did, and that's been the impact that she's been getting. Like, it's been mostly people like, oh my god, you making me see that I can not find love and that be the and, hope. Yeah, exactly. That she can be the hope. I have another artist, homie, where similar situation to a bigger degree. The song that made him go viral was a, you know, Juice World, all girls are the same type of song, you know, very sad, melancholy love song. But by the time the song started taking off, he was happy and in a relationship. And I remember talking to him and he was like, man, like, how do I introduce my girlfriend without it impacting my career? And at the time, I didn't have the knowledge I have now to really give him a good, like the answer I gave the current client, I, I probably should have gave him, mm. but I didn't have the I didn't have the 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 expertise or the or the um or the, the the proper concepts to really like see that vision all the way through. And I just remember being like, I don't know. And he was like, man, I'ma just like slowly introduce her in like increments and see how that works out. So like I'm gonna I'm gonna make her the lead in the music video, maybe make her a cover art for something. And then I don't think he's still eventually like he's basically still rolling her out. You know what I'm saying? If you ask me, like she ain't been, roll out the girl. Yeah, she ain't, she she might hit the deluxe, and that'd be when you know it'd be legit. It's like if you know him personally, you know you see her a lot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. She does. She she won the fam. Image man. You a music artist. You know what I'm saying? And you know we see this in so many different spaces. You know, I'm sure we've all dated the 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 bad bitch that you know. 30% of her clientele leases because of how she looks. And there's a party who's like, damn, I don't want you doing that. Wait, hold up. I'm confused. Are we dating her or are we paying? Dating. I, I said dating. But you said we're dating a baddie. And then you said 30% of her clientele. Yeah, like for her job. Like, let's say, let's say, <laughs> let's say <laughs> like. Who was her clientele? What's her job? That's what I'm saying, man. Man, first off, man, with women, it, 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 damn, it don't matter. If she, if she work at McDonald's, and she the bad uh, cash register at McDonald's. You're going to think about getting a McDouble on your way home from work just because you know she's there. Ah, uh, yeah, let me let you finish. I <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I, yeah, maybe that's, that's up, why. Man. Maybe that's why. All right, go ahead. <laughs> but it's like, all right, she she does a profession. She does something where you know, like, okay, there may be 20, 30% of her clients at least that are coming through because of how, how she, she looks. looks. You know okay. what I'm saying? 
you as the significant other may not like that, right? You may want that aspect of the business to stop. But then there's also a part of you that knows like, damn, if she doesn't do that, money's going to get lost. There's a part of her brain that knows that if I don't do that, money's going to get lost. And it's a very real reality that you have to confront if you're in that situation. I look at this as the exact same way. Like, you know, there are lots of rappers out there right now who are happy and in love and that confront reality. Like, if I introduce this information to my fan base, I'm going to lose money. I'm yeah. going to lose opportunities. There, yeah. are, there are people that are going to um, now be disgusted by me, and now I have to make a very real decision of my love for you versus my career. And now I am not the person that is here to tell you which side to pick. I think there's a case that can be made for either side. You know what I'm saying? But it's a real thing to think about. That is a fact. <laughs> that is a fact. The constant thing, actually. <laughs> Should you show that you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend, and all, like, all that stuff. So, again, but this is just how image plays into mm -hmm. your audience. We spoke heavily on the relationship aspect of it. Maybe we'll speak more in a different episode or clip. But for now, we'll leave it there. Want to know what y'all think, of course, because this is yet another episode of No Labels Necessary Podcast. I'm Brandon Sean. And I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.